Hey guys, it's Erica here from Big Cat Creative and today we're going to talk about optimizing our images for Squarespace. Optimizing your images is really important for a few reasons. Number one, website speed. Because unoptimized images will slow down your website, which in turn will make people frustrated and leave your site. Number two is SEO or search engine optimization. Because a website without optimized images will not impress search engines, which will lower your search engine rank. Number three, just general good design practices and not scaring away potential customers with your bad images. We're gonna tackle the three main areas of optimizing our images for Squarespace. Image compression, image quality, and image names. The first two main areas are image compression and image quality. These two sort of go together, so we'll cover them at the same time. Image compression is the technique of making your images the smallest file size they can be. The smaller the file, the faster the images will load. It's important that your website loads as fast as possible because number one, this will keep visitors on your site, and number two, search engines prioritize websites that load faster. So this means that if you have lots of large images, then your site will load slowly and your search engine rank will likely drop. On the other hand, it's important not to compress your images so much that they look pixelated. When you compress an image, you're technically reducing the quality of it, so it's easy to take it a bit too far and end up with low quality pixelated images on your website, which just isn't a good look. So for image compression and image quality, it's a bit of a balancing act. We want our images to be as small as possible while still maintaining good quality. So how do you actually compress your images? There's a couple different ways to do this. If you've got a program like Photoshop or any other design software, you can use the built-in Save for Web compression features. But if you don't have Photoshop or anything like that, you can just use online tools. So our goal is to get all of the images within a certain file size. Most people say aim for around under 500 kilobytes which is true, but depending on your images, you may be able to get it much smaller than this. So I use the following rule of thumb. So I've just opened up this website so I can tell you about the sizes and what sizes relate to which sort of images. So the first rule of thumb is that the large banner images should be between 2000 and 2500 pixels wide. And when I say a large banner image, I'm talking about sort of like background images, um, anything that spans the full width. So these images here, um, if I show you actually the background of the section, so this would be a background image because it's spanning the full width. So this would be between 2000 and 2500 pixels wide. And for these big images, we aim for 500 kilobytes or less. The next sort of tier I have is the medium website images. So that would be things like this, that they're relatively large on the page and they are a part of the design. So you want them to be good quality, but obviously they aren't as big as the full size, full width banner images. So these I call medium website images and they should be between 500 and 1500 pixels wide, depending on how big they are on the page. I would say sort of this size, I would make 1500 wide, the size I would make 1500 wide, maybe for these smaller ones, they could be between 500 or a thousand pixels wide. It just depends how big they're going to be on your page. And for these images, I aim for between 100 and 400 kilobytes. And the next tier, we're going to go even smaller with things like screenshots for educational blog posts. And these basically don't have to be super high quality to still be valuable. So I try and compress these as much as I possibly can. You can see that they're not super, super high quality, but I actually don't care as long as the reader can understand the information in there and the point I'm trying to get across. I'm not too worried about my blog post screenshots and images like that to be super high quality. So I usually make these around 500 pixels wide and I aim for between 10 and 300 kilobytes. So that is the three tiers that I go by when I'm optimizing my images. So I'll just recap. The large banner images, you want 2000 to 2500 pixels wide, aim for 500 kilobytes or less. For medium website images, it depends how big they are on the page but probably between 500 and 1500 pixels wide. 
and always aiming for between 100 to 400 kilobytes. And then for your smaller images, like screenshots for blog posts, you can make these around 500 pixels wide and aim for anywhere between 10 to 300 kilobytes, depending on the image. So I'm gonna dive into the image size and compression instructions for Photoshop first. But if you don't use Photoshop, just use the timestamp down the bottom and skip to the instructions for people who don't have Photoshop or any design software. Okay, so if you're in Photoshop, this is really easy. I'm just gonna go ahead and open up my image that I just downloaded from unsplash.com. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just crop it to the size that I want. So I want this image to be a banner image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take off some of the sky. This is obviously completely a personal preference, but it's good to get the right shape for your images before you start compressing, because we will be reducing the size of the entire image so it's good to have it cropped before we compress it. So I'm happy with this image now. The first thing I need to do is check to see what size it is. So I'm gonna click on image, image size, and you can see that it is 2,672 pixels wide and pretty high as well. So if we go by the rule of thumb that I talked about before, and because I want this to be a banner image, I'm going to reduce it to 2000 pixels wide. Just making sure this is all locked here so that it isn't stretching the image. It's gonna reduce the whole thing proportionally. Okay, so now we know that that image is the right size relatively for what we're using it for. We now need to actually compress the image. So this is really easy again in Photoshop because they have a specific feature for this. So to compress this image, we just need to go File and click Save for Web. So this is specifically a compression feature in Photoshop. And it will let you actually save the image and it will compress it at the same time. So you can see a preview of the image here, which is really good because you can actually check the quality and compress it at the same time. And down in the bottom left here, you'll see the size. So it's 355.4 kilobytes, which is under our 500 kilobytes or less target. So it's pretty good. But this number will really depend on your compression settings and your image too. I find that images with lots of color or detail will often be quite a lot larger. So you really wanna play around with these settings up here to get it under 500. The easiest settings to use for JPEG is the JPEG high, low, and medium. And I recommend saving everything in JPEG that you can. The only time I would ever use, use PNG is if I had transparent parts in that image. So because this is just a flat image, there's no transparent sections, we can use JPEG. I say that because PNG doesn't have the ability to compress as far as JPEG. So I really only like to use it when I have to, and that's when I'm using images with transparent parts in them. So I think this is pretty good for this image, but just have a play around with the JPEG high, medium, and low. You'll see the size change down the bottom. And remember, it's all about just getting it basically as low as possible without losing too much quality. So I think a me medium is a good middle ground for this one. You can also change the size of your image here as well. I like to change it before, but you can do it all here as well. So have a play around with that. Make sure to try and get your image under 500. If you're doing a medium image, I recommend under 400, ideally closer to 300. And again, if you're doing those screenshots or really small images for blog posts, then just as small as you can. Then you just need to click save. And I'm just gonna call this something else for now. We're gonna come back to file names in a minute, but you can save it. So now you'll see in your folder, you have the new compressed version and the old version. And you can see here in the size that it's 365 kilobytes compared to 1.8 megabytes, which it was before. Okay, now let's compress our image without Photoshop and just with the tools our computer has. So I'm obviously working on a Mac, which will be a little bit different than people working on Windows, 
Um, but you should be able to do this, no worries. Uh, and we can pretty much just use internet tools that are available to everyone. So this is the image here that I want to compress. You can see that it's 1.8 megabytes. It's pretty big. And I'm on a Mac. I'm just going to double click and it will open in preview. So we can actually use our preview app for the first part of this. Hopefully Windows has something equivalent. If you don't have anything like this, you could put your image into a program like Canva and crop and resize it there. Just note that any changes that you make to this preview file will replace your existing file. So if you do want to make a backup, just copy and paste that file that you've got so you have the original. If you want to, you can make changes to the copy. So this is my image. The first thing I want to do, because I want to actually have this image as a banner image, I'm first going to crop it. Crop it to the size that I want on my website. So I recommend doing any sort of cropping or editing before you compress your images. Compressing your images should be the very last thing you do in the editing your images process. So first I'm going to crop it down. I'm, I want it to be a banner image. So we'll say I'm just going to cut out some of that blue sky, something like that. And then I'm just going to use that crop tool to crop it. Okay, so now that we have our image final, this is the exact size I want it. I'm going to go ahead and look to see what the size of it is. In preview, you can find that by clicking on tools and adjust size. So we can instantly see that my image is 2,672 pixels wide. And if we go back to that rule of thumb that I was talking about before, um, because I want this image to be a banner image, I'm going to change it to 2,000 pixels. If you are working on your medium website images or screenshots or really small images, you can adjust this to whatever you want. Uh, I recommend just using that rule of thumb that I talked about below and that is below the video. So I'm going to change this to 2000 pixels and that's going to automatically adjust the height too. So everything scales proportionally. Just make sure you have this ticked. Otherwise, you're going to get some really funky stretching on your image. You can also see the resulting size of doing this. So it'll tell you that the original image was 1.8 meg and after reducing the size, it's already starting to get quite a bit smaller. Unfortunately, preview doesn't really do anything to compress your images. So this won't really be small enough, especially if you're working with large and detailed images. So go ahead and click OK, and that's going to reduce the size of the image. So like I said, if you're on Windows and you don't have preview, you could just pop it into Canva and create your own dimensions from a Canva document. Then you just need to re-download the image and have it on your computer like this. So now we have our image in the perfect size that we want it. The final thing we need to do is actually compress it. So what I recommend doing is heading to compressjpeg.com. So you can also use compresspng.com, which will do your PNGs. It also has a bunch of other file types up here. Right now we're just using a JPEG. And I would always recommend using a JPEG unless your image has transparent parts. So on your website, generally, you'd only use two file types, and that would be JPEG and PNG. And JPEG is preferred because you can compress it to be quite small without losing much quality. PNGs are harder to get smaller, so I only recommend using PNGs when you actually need to, which is when your image has transparent parts in it because our image is just a flat image, there's nothing transparent on there, then the JPEG is perfect. I also recommend a website called tinyjpeg.com. So it's really similar to compressjpeg.com, but I do find that this one actually compresses your images more. So I often go for compressjpeg.com first, because I feel like it does compress the images a bit less, but sometimes the quality is a little bit better. But in some instances, it just doesn't compress them enough. So then I come over to Tiny JPEG. So really, depending on your images, whatever works best for you works best for you. They're both good. They both do the job. And you can do JPEG and PNG files on both of them, which is really important. So I'm going to upload my photo now. You'll want to save your image. Okay, so I'm just going to click and drag my cropped image 
into compressedjpeg.com and see what it comes out with. The process is generally really fast and it will tell you how much it has compressed it by, which is quite useful. Okay, so it says right there it's compressed it by 2%, which is pretty much nothing. I thought it would at least do more than that, um, and that's not going to be enough. So this is a good instance to go over to tinyjpeg.com and see what they do. I'm just going to upload the file here. And this one somehow has been able to reduce it by 57%. So that is definitely more preferable. I'm actually going to download them and just check the quality. So I'm actually going to download both of them, just have a quick look between the quality. But realistically, we're going to have to use the one from TinyJPEG because 2% isn't enough to justify using the image. So we'll open this one up. And we'll open this one up, have a look. And they look pretty much the same. So TinyJPEG definitely wins this round. And they have managed to reduce our image to 312 kilobytes down from the original 1.8. And then the 733, which was just our preview save. So that is pretty impressive. And you'll see how much you can compress an image without really losing much quality. It looks pretty good. Awesome, so that is how you compress an image for Squarespace and without Photoshop or any fancy tools. Just remember to keep that rule of thumb that I talked about before with the sizes and the file sizes handy because it does make a big difference. The size of the image makes a big difference to how much you can compress it and it also makes a big difference to how much quality it needs on your website, you know, depending on how big or how small the actual image is displaying on your site. So it is a bit of a balancing act and it does seem a little bit tedious, but it is incredibly important to reduce the size of your images. The last step in the image optimization process is naming our images, which thankfully is the easiest part. Search engines can't read images, they can only go by what the image file name is. So it's important to optimize the image file names so that the search engines get an idea of what they are and then of course know what to do with them. This next one's really easy guys, it's simply just renaming your images. So um, first I recommend organizing your images if you're going through all of them and compressing, keeping originals, making copies, etc. Just make sure to have different folders for different images just to keep you a little bit sane because it can get really messy really fast as you can just see from here. I've got three different images right here. But this is the one I'm going to use, this is the compressed image. So I'm going to just delete these because I don't need them. But you could just put them away in a different folder. And the one that you upload to your website, you should rename with relative keywords that um, relate back to your business and also describe what the image is. So this photo is going to be a little bit hard for me to name because it's just a random photo that I downloaded off the internet. But for example, if this was an image of me, I would call it something like Erica Hartwick. Um, Big Cat Creatives, that's my name, business name, and then Squarespace Templates, which is our main offering. So basically just adding in keywords, it helps Google actually read the image. And because Google can't look at an image and read it, it has to read the image through the file name. So if you give Google or any search engine some sort of indication of what that image is by renaming the image, that's going to help with your search engine ranking. So alongside compressing all of your images, you should also rename all of your images before you upload them to your website because doing these two things will make a huge difference to your search engine ranking. So that's it. I hope you all are confident now in changing your image size, compressing your images, and then renaming them. I'll see you all in the next video.